I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer and welcome to my channel. I'm so glad you joined us today. We are going to be talking about how cortisol and estrogen relate and how estrogen can contribute to your high cortisol symptoms. So stay tuned to learn more. I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer and on this channel we talk about getting off the hormone roller coaster and feeling like yourself again. I'm a registered dietitian, nutritionist, I am a board certified family physician and functional medicine physician and I have lots of experience in helping women in particular but also men balance their hormones, balance their gut fu function, <laughs> reduce inflammation <laughs> and just to feel better and feel like themselves again. So today we're going to be talking about the stress hormone cortisol and then also one of our favorite um, female hormones to talk about estrogen. So estrogen can contribute to increasing your cortisol. Now, how does it do that? And when does it do that? Well, in times of high estrogen, like pregnancy, even when you're taking oral replacement of estrogen, like, um, well, in bioidentical hormone replacement, but also when you're doing like the birth control pill or when you are um, taking some kind of extra estrogen, then that can increase your cortisol and that's a high estrogen state. So these high estrogen states can increase your cortisol. Polycystic ovarian syndrome, also known as PCOS, perimenopause, I talk about that a lot on my channel. So at the end of your having your cycles, and it can span anywhere from two to 10 years, your hormones can go a little crazy and the estrogen can kind of climb up and be like a roller coaster sometimes but can definitely be high and that can contribute to some high cortisol symptoms too. And then also I talked about bioidentical hormone replacement. So sometimes women will take extra estrogen after they go through menopause and that can sometimes contribute to elevated cortisol. So what does high cortisol look like? Well, to the extreme in the medical terminology, it can look like Cushing syndrome where you have extra belly fat here, um, some between the back of your shoulder blades, like a hump, they call it a buffalo hump, um, slow healing of your wounds, purple stretch marks sometimes like on the belly and uh, around the kind of chest area, I mean the trunk area, and um, we, uh, uh, kind of around face sometimes and sometimes even acne. So those can be signs of elevated cortisol and but that is the more extreme version when we talk about it in functional medicine land <laughs> in the kind of function fun, kind of medicine that i practice um it's not necessarily to that extreme we i do work with patients with cushing's but with high cortisol without the end of the spectrum of cushing's with high cortisol you can just feel wired and tired sometimes have trouble sleeping you can have that belly fat accumulation here um, anxious, palpitations, almost like over caffeinated kind of feeling that can all be symptoms of high cortisol. So what can happen in that connection between estrogen and high cortisol? So high estrogen can contribute to high cortisol directly, or it can contribute to the imbalance that we talk about on the channel a lot called estrogen dominance, where Estrogen is always going to outweigh your progesterone, but when there's a huge gap and that gap widens, then estrogen can become more dominant and suppress that progesterone. And progesterone is a very important hormone for women, especially more so for women. Men do have some, you know, progesterone and estrogen, but it's not as important for them. And then also in times of high stress, our brain gets the signal to produce more cortisol and kind of slow down on the progesterone. The survival technique you know you don't want to be reproducing you know a lot <laughs> or at all if you're under high levels of stress so our brains in our high stress worlds now that we have cannot differentiate they still think you know being chased by a tiger is the classic example and they will sometimes shut down that system of the progesterone and then kind of favor the cortisol production and so that You've got both the estrogen suppressing the cortisol, you've got the cortisol, I mean, estrogen suppressing the progesterone and the cortisol suppressing the progesterone. And then you can end up in a low progesterone state, which makes a lot of your hormone symptoms worse. So how do we get ourselves out of this situation, out of this high cortisol situation? Well, I've talked about that a lot. I have another video on high cortisol and supplements, but today I'm not going to focus as much on supplements because I've 
done that video and I can do more of those, but instead on kind of lifestyle changes and other tools we can use that um, can help us. But first, I want you to comment down below if you've had high cortisol, if you've been diagnosed with high cortisol, if you've had these symptoms that I'm talking about, and even if you want to share what your symptoms are or what you've done about it. So please comment down below. And please remember to give this video a thumbs up and share it if you know anybody that has high cortisol, high estrogen, hormone imbalance, share the channel, share the video. So what the first thing I want to say is don't guess test that's what we do in functional medicine and yes we do a lot of testing and it is a much more benefit a lot of times to the provider you know it, it, it helps me a lot to do that testing it can get expensive some of it is expensive some of it's not so much but it's really worth it when you test and you don't guess reason being as part of that is cortisol follows a diurnal rhythm it's it's just like any uh, hormone where it's not just one marker you're looking for, you're looking for a pattern. And particularly with cortisol, you're looking for that pattern. And I'll show an example of that here. So confirmed high cortisol on a test um, or an abnormal pattern, that's when that calls for extra steps. But first of all, how are we gonna test? We are going to test with either saliva or urine. Blood testing for cortisol, if we have to, we will do that, but it's not as accurate. You're putting a needle in somebody's arm, that could cause them stress, that could be just a you know falsifying factor within your results, and then it just doesn't show you that pattern. You're not gonna have somebody in front of you in your office sticking a needle in them every four hours and overnight and all that, that's just not realistic. So um, urine or saliva testing, now I use Genova a lot. I use um, the Dutch test a lot for my hormone testing, including estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, and um, cortisol. And I'll stick those links down below of these companies. And then I like Diagnostic Solutions, and there's lots of companies that can do this. ZRT is another great one that you can do. So if, when you have this confirmed high or abnormal pattern of your cortisol, what do you do about it? Well, first you're going to take a look at your lifestyle. You're not going to reach for that supplement. You're not going to reach for that Xanax. Hopefully you're going to take a look at your lifestyle. So what are your sources of stress? Now I'm not only talking about emotional stress, job stress. I'm talking about physical stress. Are you over exercising? Have you had an injury, a trauma? Were you in the hospital recently? Are you recovering from infections? Are you recovering from anything chronic? Or do you have some kind of chronic disease? But other sources of stress, sources of inflammation, like I said, injuries. You can look with the blood test at your HSCRP or CRP level, CA reactive protein, and that can show us if there's a lot of inflammation. So you can talk about that with your doctor. You can also look for your sources of extra estrogen. Are you estrogen dominant? Have you done a hormone test to look at your hormone balance? Are you overweight or, or do you have um, the condition, condition of obesity where you can make extra estrogen because of the extra fat? Um, you also wanna look at your progesterone and estrogen balance. Are they in balance or out of balance? Are you taking hormone replacement therapy? Is that being monitored? Is it at the right level? And are you taking oral contraceptives, meaning the birth control pill or some kind of um, estrogen implant or something like that? So you also want to work, uh, look at work stress. So that's a source of stress. Are you setting boundaries? Are you delegating? Are you speaking with your employer and employees, um, uh, colleagues and everybody about how the stress can be better managed at work? Are you speaking up for yourself? You know, not speaking up for yourself and kind of bottling it in can lead to increased cortisol and this whole hormone imbalance and that feeling of just being wired and tired and anxious and not sleeping. We do want to look at all aspects of our life before we reach for bottles of any kind of cure. You also want to look at your relationships. Are you, do you have toxic relationships? Are you practicing open communication in your relationships? Talking about how the relationship makes you feel, how the situation of the relationship is, you know, I'm guilty of, uh, my husband would agree, he doesn't watch these videos, but he would agree that I'm guilty of not talking about my feelings, not opening up until it comes to the last minute, and then maybe things bubble over in the wrong direction. So being open and honest and having good relationships and supportive relationships in your life is important. 
And then look at the physical stress, like I said above, injuries, chronic disease, imbalanced blood sugar, that can definitely contribute to high cortisol. All of those factors you want to look at. And then work on lowering your body fat, if, if that's something you haven't aggressively worked on. You know, maybe not doing the high cortisol type exercises where you're going to make that high cortisol worse, like endurance running, like really hard cross tra crossfit training, um, really heavy lifting, something that really stresses your body. All, all exercise is going to make your cortisol go up, but yoga, Pilates, interval training where you're doing maybe some high intensity and then balancing that with low intensity, walking, hiking, biking, all of those are calmer and they don't cause that cortisol to surge as much. Some other tools that I really love in my practice and that I use is in, it, this is a great tool for people that don't do well with meditation. I encourage meditation, it's free. There's apps out there, there's videos on YouTube, um, and I'll put some of those down below in a playlist. And there's just all kinds of resources and you don't even need a tool for it. You can just sit and you know be mindful, be within your mind. You can practice mantra meditation all kinds of free and simple ways you can do meditation. But I have a lot of patients that tell me, I just can't do meditation. And they can, but it's just not their thing. So you could try um, heart math, has a lot of great research behind it, and it's all based on heart rate variability. So how that works is low heart rate variability is a bad thing. You want high heart rate variability, and that would show increased resilience um, to stress. So improving your heart rate variability, um, and you can measure that and with something like heart math, which is a clip you put on your ear or your finger, and then you attach it to your phone. And you can do games and you can track it. You can track um, your progress with heart rate variability. So heartmath.com is a great place to start, and I'll put that link down below. Um, and there's other, some, some other heart rate variabilities. You also on a lot of smart watches, they have a version of heart rate variability where under the stress section where you follow the heart or you follow the ball and you breathe and you try to match it. And that's a great thing for people to do if they can't just like quiet their mind on their own. So that is a great option. If you want me to tell you more about heart rate variability and do a video on that, please comment down below and let me know because I'd love to explore that more myself. I, I've used heart math, but I want to explore the other options and I'd like to bring it to you as well. Um, so mindfulness, meditation, deep breathing, yoga, Epsom salt baths, all those things, sauna, all those things are, are great things that can bring your um, cortisol levels back into balance. So thanks for watching today. Also, if you have estrogen dominance, hormone imbalance, uh, you're a woman going through perimenopause or even before that, like early 30s or after menopause, please join my Mighty Network. It's now, it used to be free for a short period of time. It's now a paid network where you pay a monthly fee, but you get access to my perimenopause solutions course called Emerge, which has resources and nutrition advice and an app and exercise advice and all about hormone balancing and how you can present that to your doctor, what kind of tests you can take, how to interpret your tests, how to change your lifestyle, how to relax, how to rejuvenate, how to work on hair and skin and all those things that can be hormone related, energy levels, libido. So check it out. Um, I'll put a link down below and thanks for joining me and please join me in the next video. I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer. Please like, share, subscribe. That keeps the channel going. Thanks so much. Take care.